Christians are fearful of the future, yet their pastors won't prophesy. Acts chapter 7 verse 48 through 49. Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet, Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord, O oh, what is the place of my rest? I would like to give all honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rawacha, Kodash. Double honors to my elders at Great Millstone. Seeking honors to the elect. Peace and blessings to the one third. And confusion of faces in the four corners of the earth. Shalom, Shalom. Nearly 70% of churchgoers have a growing sense of fear regarding the future. Now, what is prophecy? The word prophecy, pro means before, face means to speak. So we speak on events before they happen. But as you can see, the people are going more and more in fear. Notice the percentage is 70%, two-thirds, right? <clears throat> so looking at that, let's go into where it says more than two-thirds of Protestant pastors, down where the, the purple writing, the purple lining is at, have reported that there is a growing sense of fear in their congregations regarding the future, according to a recent report by Lifeway Research. Hence, that's why I open up with Acts chapter 7, verse 48 through 49. The Lord is not dealing with these Martin Day churches. The Lord is not dealing with these Martin Day pastors because they're not coming in the spirit of the ancients, which will be the prophets of old being here again today. And 1 Corinthians the 14th chapter, it says, The spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Hence, in Revelation the 10th chapter, the angel told John the Revelator that he shall prophesy again amongst many nations and people. Meaning that what? Reincarnation, the prophets are here again today. Hence, the Lord is not dealing with these Martin Day churches because the Lord does not dwell in a temple that is made with hands, hence a building. Okay? So, 1 Corinthians Chapter 3, verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? That's a question. And, and I'm going to get back into that. Let's go back to this picture. LifeWay Research released the findings of a study that found 69% of Protestant pastors said they believe there is a growing sense of fear within their congregations about the future of the nation and world. That's prophecy. That's prophecy. What book are you reading? What are you not understanding? What are you not comprehending? Okay? Hence, the Lord said, what was it? It said, um, damn, forgive me. I meant to put it down. Ezekiel, I think it's Ezekiel, the second chapter, like the second, the last verse. He said, I opened up the book and it was full of lamentations, mournings, and woe. Y'all can't live in Proverbs and Psalms all your life. You have to deal with reality. Even Isaiah the 45th chapter, it says that the Lord created good and evil. In Psalm 66, it refers to the Lord as a terrible God, a terrible power. And, and Jeremiah the 5th chapter, does it not he say, Will ye not fear me, who made it bound for the sea that it cannot pass? Why do you think we don't get flooded again? What do you think the purpose of the rainbow is? An ensign to never flood the earth. But the Lord can open up the earth and swallow you. The Lord can strike you with a lightning bolt. He can pick you up out of the sky with a tornado or a hurricane. You don't fear that power? Have you heard of a volcanic eruption? Huh? Yes. So the Lord is not dealing inside these churches because they tell you lies. Sweet, sweet, bitter, but sweet lies because it's going to be bitter in the end. Just like IUIC in general but it's not to say that there are sincere people inside those churches or even sincere people inside other camps outside of GMS. Right? But the Lord will pull them out of that. He's not dealing with them inside those churches, inside those false, false prophets, I would say. Right? So, Joel 2 and 27 32 and ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. So where does the Lord dwell? What is the temple of the Lord the nation of Israel and that I am the Lord your God 
and none else. So that cuts the whole adoption for all people to be saved. Nope. And my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. See, upon all flesh. Okay. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. The Lord is going to pour out the spirit upon all of Israel. Now, yeah, heathens do get visions. But that don't mean they'll be saved. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will shoot wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. Have we not seen that, y'all? Wonders in the heavens. How many, since, since, since the early 2000s, how many solar eclipses and lunar eclipses have we had? How many sightings of what the world are going to call UFOs, which are the chariots of God? Huh? Has that not been going on? Huh? That's evident that we are in the last days. But why aren't your pastors them talking about this? But y'all fearful. You got questions that they can't answer. If they went to the Bible, they could. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. The blood moon. Before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. That has already happened, y'all. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Now listen, there's a colon there. Listen to what it says. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. So just, so just because the heathen see the word, the, the phrase, who shall, whosoever shall be. Oh my God, we can know. Because only salvation is for only those in Israel that believe. Hence, there's an elect and there's a two-thirds. And the one third is a part of the elect. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Woo! The remnant. So two parts therein shall be cut off and die. Hence, let's go to the sec second picture of the screenshot of the article. The survey also found that while 64% of, I'm going to read it verbatim, white pastors, which would be Edomite pastors saw fear in their congregation. Only 47% of African American or Judahite or Israelite pastors reported the same. Additionally, 76% of non denominational pastors reported fear about the future of Christianity in their churches, which was more than reported by Baptists, 68%, Methodists, 66%, and Presbyterian slash Reformed pastors, 49%. Why is that? Because they're not teaching you the truth. Isaiah 30 and 20 through 21. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity in the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore, but thine eyes shall see thy teachers. What's the bread of adversity in the water of affliction? Transatlantic slave trade. The trail of tears. Cristobal Cologne. The Ku Klux Klan, Jim Crow laws, <laughs> segregation. I mean, we can go on and on from 1492 up until now. And I just saw an article in Mississippi where six officers, Edomite officers, were pretty much got federal charges for torturing two Israelite um, men for, for 90 minutes. Had them handcuffed, tased them, and used sex toys on those men. And then did a mock, then, then they also did a mock um, execution where they thought the gun didn't have any bullets and shot one of them in the mouth. And try to, and they all tried to get um, sweep it under the rug. This is happening right now in this day and age. We know who Esau Edom is. You have a perpetual hatred towards us, man. We know who you are. And we're the teachers to teach who you are and who we are and what's to come in the end. Isaiah 30 and 21, and thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, remember, your ears shall hear, this is the way, walk ye in it, when ye turn to the right hand, and when ye turn to the left. And what does it mean by that, he have ears to hear? Remember what it say, he has ears to hear, let him hear. You can be, you can hear someone, but are you listening? Just like Yahweh Shai said, I think it's John, St. John 10 and 27, if I'm not mistaken, or 31. He said, my sheep hear my voice. That's what he means by you shall hear. Because 
Man, all I had to know from what the book from Babylon the Temple 2, like, hold on. Black Jewish slaves? I thought the Jews were white. That was my grandma always told me. You know, I'm saying this to myself. I talked to them black Israelites, ran across the bar. They started breaking out history and precepts. And I was like, wait a minute. It's just in the slave trade. Do in 2068. So, you know, it was very entertaining because at, at, at that point it was, we got next, you know. And they kept saying, Bahashim Yahweh Shai. And that's all I knew. Then it came across GMS. Oh, my God. It was a done deal from then on out. So I heard the teachers and I followed them. Right? So where's the truth? On the streets. With the elders of Great Millstone, like minded men, no down. Right? But it's in the book which these pastors are not teaching the people from. This is, um, oh, forgive me. Isaiah 34 and 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord, out of the book of Yahweh. What's that? The Bible. And read, no one of these shall fail, none shall want her mate. For my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath gathered them. What gathered us? The Bible. Joel, not Joel, forgive me. John 6 and 63. What do you have, shall I say? Who the word are going to call Jesus? The words that speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The Bible gathered us. The Spirit of the Lord gathered us. The Rabbi HaKadosh, the Spirit of truth, which the world cannot receive. When Yahusha said, I will be with you to the end of the world. What's the end of the world? Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it. I follow it. Not the physical world. The society you see it today. What the so-called white man has has created. According to Job 9, 24, the earth given to the hands of the wicked. Malachi, the first chapter, the book of wickedness is Esau. You can't get around that. Okay, the Lord gathering us with his spirit. So, don't let these devils try and fool you, man. Salvation is only for us. Like I told the one eating my uh, my camp last time, I said, wait a minute. We were the ones that were put in the hardcore bondage. And all nations on the earth benefited from our slavery. And now one nation on earth came to save us. So what do all the other nations need to be salvaged for? We the only people that need salvation on the earth. The people who went through the transatlantic slave trade, the so-called Negro Latinos and Native Americans, you can't say nothing about that. This is your kingdom. Live in it. Love it. I go into this last little verse down here, or a little passage. One of the most terrible weapons that the devil hmm, used against Christians is the weapon of fear. The devil used fear as a weapon. That's what Esau does. You try to use fear, physical fear again, mental fear, all of that against us. One thing you can't do, man, you can't put this, you can't put a spiritual fear on us because there's no enchantment against Jacob. You may get the two thirds of our people, but the one third and the elect, you can't get us, man. Through the spirit and power, how about Shemashah, you can't get us. Why? Because we know the greatest feat the devil has ever done was make us believe that he did not exist. Lo and behold, the whole time. The people that had us a hardcore bondage want us to want to be our friend now. What is the benefit from you to be our friend? Like I tell our people, man, they will never accept you. They just tolerate you. What can they get from you to their dispose of you? Hell, look what, they, look what they do to their own people. So, we don't have nothing to fear. They do. Sirach 33 and 1. There shall no evil happen unto him that fear of the Lord. But in temptation, even again, he will deliver him. So what do we have to fear other than the Lord who controls all aspects of life? Always keep in mind, in the book of Job, Satan couldn't do anything until the Lord allowed him to. So we, so don't fear what man can do. And fear what Yahweh Bahashimi Shai would allow them to do. Hence, if you have faith, and the Lord find you faithful. What do you have to fear if you fear nothing but Yahweh, Yahweh Shai? So with that being said, I pray you was edifying, fed, stay in the spirit. Don't fear it, just endear it. Ask for forgiveness, pray without ceasing. Stay humble, remain diligent. Quamasha Allah, Mufflababal, Shalom.